Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. Welcome to the Pool Chasers Podcast. This is episode one. We're going to start things off how Greg and I grew up around pools and some of the cool, fun memories that we had growing up. Then we will kind of jump into this cool, crazy idea I had to start Brothers Pool Service. Also, we'll discuss how Greg comes into the picture and takes a promotion in San Diego only to work there for one day before he realized he was supposed to be with me in Arizona. After that, we'll kind of dive into a little bit of Brothers Pool Service beginnings and how we juggle the task of building the business. From there, we'll get into some of our social media platforms and how we use them to grow. We also get into some of our core beliefs and, you know, a few reasons why we decided to start the podcast. We are going to jump right into it after a word from our sponsors. We hope you all enjoy. What's going on, everybody? This episode is brought to you by Jobber. Jobber is by far our favorite tool for collecting deposits, payments, scheduling customer jobs, and assigning tasks to a specific person on our team. If you're looking for a better way to stay organized, this is it. We love how simple it is to take a call, create a customer profile, and schedule a date for a person on our team to do an initial bid on service or repairs. Also, building a quote could not be easier. You can import line items and the cost so that you can build a quote fast in the field. Our team also loves that all photos, videos, and notes are attached to a specific customer. We can simply go to the customer's profile and know right away what is going on. If you are struggling to stay organized, this will help immediately. We start every morning off by going through our assignments and what needs to be done that day. I don't even know how we did things before Jobber. If you have any questions, their customer service team is out of this world. We have never had a bad or long waiting experience with the Jobber team. Jobber is so cool that they are hooking up all of our listeners with a free 14-day trial. Just visit getjobber.com backslash pool chasers. That's getjobber.com backslash pool chasers. Try it out. We promise you won't be disappointed. So when you guys were younger, I mean, who was taking care of the pool? Were you doing it or who was doing it? (laughs) I was definitely not doing it. (laughs) You weren't taking care of the pool? No. Yeah, we had a pool growing up, you know, ever since I was about seven, but definitely was not me or any of my brothers or even you or my dad, who was my mom. Yeah. Which is pretty funny when you come to think about it. Yeah, I remember going out there and seeing your mom just testing, you know, the water yeah. And she just looked like a mad scientist. And back then, I knew nothing about pools, knew nothing about repairs, nothing. Uh, so seeing, you know, a lady by the pool testing the water, she had the little tailor kit where you're doing the drops and everything. It's like, dude, shit, is this pool safe? Yeah, she definitely had the tailor kit going on. You know, I didn't know how to use it at all. She taught me a little bit here and there how to use the drops, but it was much more basic then, too. It was just like yellow and red. Now you got the green, white, blue, you know, you got all the different types of chemical testing, but... Oh, yeah, I bet strips weren't even around yet. No, no strips. <laughs> so much easier. Yeah. So Future Greg and Tyler be like, hey, here, just dip this in. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think Taylor kits are a little bit more accurate. Oh, but, most definitely. you know, for what we do, the service routes, it's a little bit quicker to do those test strips. And then like we always do, if we need to be thorough, more thoroughly tested, we'll go in, you know, with our... SGS meter and some different stuff and tests further, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, didn't you guys, I thought I remember um, you were talking about how your younger brother and your dad or a family friend or something like that was, uh, they had to do a sand change. Yeah. And it wasn't just a normal sand change. It was a sand change on one of those HRPB big sand filters with all the bolts on them. You know, that takes an hour and a half to get it off. The ones Um, that you don't even offer a sand change, you're just like, no, I think you might need to replace that. (laughs) Yeah, that's pretty much what we do now, for (laughs) sure. It's pretty rough to do a sand change on now. Um, But yeah, I remember him. My little brother probably had to have been around 12 or so at that time. And family friend, you know, my dad somehow convinced him to do it where he wasn't even there, which I'm not sure how that happened. But I just remember Toby telling me it was like an all-day event. And I definitely get that now. Um Nobody wants to really do those, so I bet you everybody else out there gets that for sure. (laughs) It's crazy how, you know, we enjoy pools, you know, all the time when you're younger. You go to birthday parties, you go on vacation with your parents or whatever. You never think about it at all that, you know, somebody has to take care of this and somebody makes a living, you know, cleaning these pools, doing the repairs, things like that. And now we're like, there's not, there hasn't been one time where we've gone to a hotel or something like that. And we didn't, you know, go looking for the the pool equipment or just kind of look at the clarity of the water and be like, Oh, hmm. 
<laughs> I need to test this before the family jumps in. Yeah, for sure. I never once looked at a pool from a business owner's perspective at all. Yeah, and why would you, you know? <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do any of that, but it's just crazy. Now it's completely different. Yeah, we look at everything different. Um, yeah. I mean, you, when you're swimming in the pool, just enjoying it, you know, we had lots of family 4th of July barbecues that, you know, it's around swimming with something called basketball, you know, where it's no rules, basketball basically in the pool, stuff like that. I mean, there was all kinds of fun games, you know, different family events around the pool, but oh, never yeah. once, never once you look at it like, oh man, I bet you somebody makes money off of this or yeah. That's the only thing you're focused on is just having fun in the pool. Yeah. You know what I mean? All those, I mean, we had so many good times growing up just in your guys' pool alone yeah where we like you said did the basket brawl and you know it's pretty much just basketball but um you're brawling you know <laughs> to somehow get the basketball into the hoop um yep. but yeah that was a good time bring all the family together uh friends things like that it was a super good time you know yeah. up doing all that it was super cool i mean that's what you focus on when you're younger and your parents buy a pool and it ain't your money. It's, yeah. your, it's your parents' money. So you have no idea how much a pool even costs. When I found out how much pools cost, I was like, whoa. Oh, like, yeah. My parents built our pool and, you know, like, I know they contracted it out and different, different stuff, but I mean, it's still pretty expensive. Do you remember though, that. when you were younger, like if somebody was coming over, like friends were coming over or something like that. And like, there was a bunch of stuff on the top of the pool and you had to like go grab, you know, the, the pool <laughs> net that's flat. Like, oh, man, I got people coming over. I got leaves. I got all kinds of stuff on top. Oh, yeah. Man, we have the that. flat nets, too. <laughs> the homeowner net. Yeah. You guys all know what the homeowner net looks oh, like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I got in trouble quite a few times at my pool growing up because I would net the stuff off the top. And I would, because the only way to get it off, you had to, like, bang it on whack something. It on so I'd whack wall. it on the wall and it go into the neighbor's yard. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's that net is rough. Yeah, I don't even know if the other nets were around, though, because that was... I mean, 20 years ago now. Yeah, so. and I wasn't in very many pool stores no. back then, so I have no idea. I remember my mom going down the, to Bill's Pools, and like not even Leslie's, like Bill's Pools on the corner. And Was Bill there? Probably. He had to have been. Hey, Bill! <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, she would get the water tested and buy her chemicals there, but I never even once thought about somebody doing that, which is crazy. We just look at it a whole different... You're right, when we go on family trips, and I, I went to Legoland last year with my family and I sent you guys a video of the pool and it had like all the dirt all on the bottom and I was like yeah I'm not I'm not swimming in that and <laughs> you couldn't guys, resist huh nope couldn't resist it I had it was funny because I kind of did it secretly and I don't think really anybody really would care that I was doing it but for me I was like kind of trying to hide it like oh man this guy's probably this guy's definitely not doing his job <laughs> <laughs> get you a quote for uh <laughs> Yeah, and it was not, I mean, we're in Arizona, so definitely was not quoting it, but that's how it felt, like, yeah. walking up trying to do a bid, like, oh, man, this guy, yeah, I don't, I don't know, we don't, we don't ever like to rip on other companies for sure, but I was just like, oh, man, this guy is definitely not doing it. Oh, yeah, I did the same <laughs> thing, I took my family to Laguna Beach uh, last summer, and I remember just looking at the clarity of the water, there was so much etching in the pool, yep. it was nighttime, and the you know the spa light was on but the pool light wasn't on i'm like that probably doesn't work don't, yeah don't make me get out my tool bag get, get back here and start fixing stuff yeah start it's gonna, testing it's gonna cost bowls. you yeah <laughs> but that definitely didn't happen no <laughs> so but you're right the the pool equipment is like one of the coolest things on any of those commercial pools we don't really service commercial pools so for us we don't really see those big you know humongous filters and humongous heaters yeah, that's like, cool I to see it all walking back there and i saw this huge heat pump i've never seen one that big before which is you know we're on heat pumps and heaters and different stuff all day long but it's residential so to go back there and just try to find it every time i go to a hotel or go somewhere that has a pool or a big water feature i always try to find the equipment room now which is pretty funny because you could care less as a kid all you do is see that water oh for jump sure in it. <laughs> so what do you think is like some of your fondest memories growing up you know with the pool you know what I mean? Besides the basketball we just talked about. Yeah. I mean, I don't, there's a lot of stuff. I don't know, man. It's, you know, hanging out by the spa, you know, late night spas. I remember listening to this, music. Yeah. Yeah. This big, super huge boom box and like tiny TV out there. That was like the coolest thing ever. Now you got like, you know, shows and stuff that are putting these big old TVs. Oh, waterproof water headphones. Features. Yeah. They got waterproof. all kinds of crazy stuff now. Yeah. Waterproof headphones, waterproof TVs. Uh, I mean, we had like a basic 
20 inch box TV out there with a humongous boom box with CDs, you know, and oh, radio. good old CDs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I remember bumping, you know, music out there at night. That was pretty cool. Um, we had some good, good, you and I had some good talks out there, our brothers and family and other friends, you know, just hanging out there. Um, I remember uh, almost blowing off your brother's foot. That yeah. Was a, that was not a good time, <laughs> but it was definitely a memory. Yeah. And that was definitely around the spa. Yeah. So. We were next to the spa and you know, lit that M80 or whatever it was, which is why you probably shouldn't let kids uh, buy fireworks. No. Um, and I just wanted to scare him. And I was going to throw it next to him um, just so it would make a loud noise and scare him. Right. Of course, it bounced and fell in between his, like, toes. <laughs> and I'm yelling. I don't even know what to yell to him. Just like, ah, duh, duh, you know, <laughs> kick it. Get out of the way. I mean? And he saw it. And, I mean, he freaked out. And he, like, kicked it. I mean, just in time. But it caught, like, just a piece of his toe. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was it was all bad. It was a little just, bloody. Yeah, it was a little bloody. He was, <laughs> he took it, you know, like a... Took it like a man. Yeah. And I was like, all right, we good? <laughs> Don't tell your parents. Don't tell them. <laughs> they can't know. Yeah, I totally remember that. I think, I mean, you know this, but one of our favorite memories is you jumping off the roof. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, this is a family discussion all the time. It's, we can't tell you what exactly was said, but it's pretty embarrassing that this comes up at like every family event where, so I'm going to break it down real quick. <laughs> so <laughs> our brother, Travis, um, he, it was his birthday party, right? Yeah, he was having birthday. his birthday party. And I think he had one of his friends over and playing um, acoustic guitar, yeah, playing the acoustic guitar. I mean, the, the mood was right. You had all the kids. I mean, there was no fire, but there, there should have yeah, been totally like a kumbaya. Um, yeah, moment. definitely. A bunch of kids circling around. Um, I thought it would be, um, a good time to climb up on top of the roof and jump off the roof and say some things that you shouldn't say um, <laughs> ever. Not appropriate. Definitely not appropriate for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, ever. Um, not going to tell you what I said. So I did that, jumped off the roof into the pool, not supposed to be doing either one of those. And um, yeah, I just got out of the pool. And of course, your mom was there and was like, hey, where'd you, where'd you come from? You know? <laughs> I'm just being stupid, like, oh, I jumped real high, real fast over there. Yeah, it's I just like, ran and jumped off the edge. Yeah, and she's like, dude, this is not my first rodeo. You clearly jumped off the roof. Yeah. And you, did you say what I think you said? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, I did not. No, I did not, ma'am. <laughs> did not. And yeah. you clearly did. Everybody heard you. Yeah. I mean, except for my dad, which he was inside. Yeah. And that's, luckily, who I, that's who I was scared about. Yeah. <laughs> You're lucky he wasn't with. out there for the <laughs> actual event. I'm sure you uh, got talked to later about it. Oh, but. definitely. <laughs> I'm sure it was a good talk, and I'm sure it never happened again. So uh, that got all cleared well, up. that was clearly not the first time you jumped off the roof either. And I think that was what made it worse. Because <laughs> he had told you, like, just recently not to jump off the roof anymore, and you totally did it. And then you said something you should not, which... It's funny and right over my mom. <laughs> yeah. But that's what we do so well, man. Live and learn, you yep. know, kind of, unfortunately, I have to learn the hard way. Sometimes, sometimes. Um, and uh, you learn the hard way and hopefully you have people in your life can straighten you out and point you in the right direction. And that's what happened that day. I mean, um, any of the, a lot of what we do here, I mean, is learning experiences, you know, oh, we, every day, brothers, every single day, every day is something new. You learn how to talk to a customer. If you say something wrong, you you realize you said something wrong and you have to tweak it the next time the situation happens. If you talk to one of our guys, you know, about something and it didn't go down as we thought it was going to and somebody got upset or something, you could totally have to change the way you approach that next time. I mean, the way you email, the way you talk, the way we do bids, I mean, the way we do acid washes and, you know, now we have drain waivers. We try not to make the same mistake twice because, um, you know, you make a mistake, you got to pay for it. Um, it's better if you don't have to go through that again. So it's better to just fix it. Yeah, fix it the first time for sure. So let's fast forward a little bit, Tyler. Um, so you moved um, to Phoenix after living in California for, what, 18 years? So you lived in uh, California for about 18 years. You grew up there, went to school there, graduated. Um, then you moved out to Phoenix. Yeah, I've been here um, since 2005. You know, I went back to Cali for a few summers here and there, but permanently we've been out here you know since then so um you know i went through quite a few different types of jobs dabbled in real estate a little bit you know i ended up being at this vitamin company that i enjoy working at and you know it was a call center environment moved my way off the phones into this position in the business services side 
and I thought I was going pretty well and I was doing, you know, a good job for them. And they taught me a lot of stuff and I, I was dealing with quite a few business owners, millionaires, um, figuring out how to communicate with them. You know, a lot of what I learned now on how I email people to this day is because of that job. So it definitely helped me out there. I was working hard for them. You know, they had a promotion come up that I didn't even know about. Somehow this guy got promoted into the manager position without it really getting put out to the floor that that was open. It was kind of unusual for them not to offer the position. So I went in there, asked her, you know, hey, what's up with not seeing the offer? Because I thought I had, you know, done well for you and, you know, I would have liked to apply for it. And, you know, this guy had like six months managerial experience, something that I didn't have, but I clearly knew the job better than him. So it was a little frustrating. At that point, I kind of had this click in my head, man, where I was like, you know what? I'm working my butt off. I deserve that position. And I don't think it's fair, which, you know, clearly all of us understand life isn't fair. But I didn't think it was fair to not even get the opportunity. And I get it. It's probably some friend to the family or something like that where he just got promoted. But, you know, that's rough when you work your butt off and then someone that you don't think deserves the job yeah. gets put in front of you. So, you know, as having more of an entrepreneurial spirit, you know, I just didn't like that, man. And I knew that I worked hard. I knew I was a good employee. So at that point, I kind of just said, you know what, I'm going to see if I can find something else. So started researching it. And, you know, I, there's all, all kinds of like work from home jobs, but there's none that are really that good. They're all like fake on the internet and, or, you know. Yeah. And you're trying to find something that you're already good at. You're trying to apply skills you know, from other jobs that you've had before. And it's kind of like, what am I good at? You know, what, what things am I good at that I can apply to some job where I can be my own boss, you know, be an entrepreneur and start my own business. Yeah. You, know? you don't want to start over completely if you don't have to, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, I've somehow I, I talked to my friend and he bought a pour out and I was like, I didn't, I didn't even know what a pour out was to be honest. Because like I said when, earlier, we didn't have a pool guy. Yeah. So say a paper route like, or a yeah, pool route? A paper route? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so, you know, he told me he bought 20 pools off some guy and I started to research it. And, you know, that's, that's where it all started. <laughs> you know, I found out that like this might could be something you could do. I pitched it to my brother, Toby, hence where the brother's name came from. And we started doing it. I did a lot of the research, figured out, you know, the pools could be big in Arizona. I didn't realize even living here for, I think, close to five years at that point, I didn't even realize that there was that many pools here because I didn't own a house with a pool. And What is it, like one in two houses or one in three houses that have a pool here in Arizona? Yeah, it's like two and a half houses for sure. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, if you go, even when we do our initial bids and stuff, then we're looking, you know, where the houses that we need to go to, it's like nothing but pools. It looks yeah. more like every single house for sure. here in Scottsdale anyway has a pool. So it's, it's yeah, that Google overview or Google yeah. maps view, you know, there's like so many pools and definitely I, a perfect place to do anything with pools. Totally. And I figured that out pretty quick. Um, I never really ran my own business, but I knew that like, this is something I could do, even if it started off with just us doing 60 pools and getting enough money to, you know, provide for my family. That was the original idea, you know, something that could get me out of there and work full time, you know, for ourselves. So, you know, pitch it to him, kind of started it. And shortly after that, he kind of was about to get married and wanted more of yeah. a job where he got, you know, insurance and stuff. So we talked and he kind of got out of it and I kind of did it by myself for a while. So it's, you know, it's rough in the beginning. I'm sure anybody that started their own business, it's man, those first couple years are extremely rough. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, those are, you're, you're out in the field, you're, you're learning new things. Things aren't going your way. You're dealing with customers and you're trying to figure out how to counter certain things. So um, you definitely see it's definitely not, you know, it's not for everybody. Not for the lighthearted. Yeah. <laughs> not that he's that, but yeah, I mean, he was definitely in a different place in his life and I was totally past that place. You know, I had already had a kid and I needed something more. I ran the numbers and figured out that it was a great investment for our area that we lived in. You know, if we were willing to work hard, if I was willing to work hard, you know, it was definitely a no brainer. So we went out. I got a truck, you know, a little red F-150, although most people want white trucks and, 
you know, that was what I could get. For, and then you got Big Red. <laughs> yeah, I got Big Red. <laughs> put some, you know, wording on the back of it, had something custom made and, you know, went to town, but had to get some chemicals and, you know, all the supplies. But that's what's so cool about the pool industry. Like you, you don't need a whole lot to do it. You know, if except for the skill set, obviously you have to develop. That's but, the biggest thing. Yeah. Just that investment of time. Yeah. yeah, you can start. You know, you can start a pool company with almost you know nothing. Yeah, you know, a couple thousand dollars, a truck, and you know the intuition. You can do it. Um, but it's definitely a whole different ball game when you start to get past you know fifty, sixty pools. That's when it becomes a real business and a real game but most definitely you know it's something cool for you know if you want to work for yourself and you have that drive and entrepreneurial spirit and it's definitely one of the lowest buy-in things i can think of um you know you if you try to do a restaurant or a store or something you're at least talking like thirty thousand. you know to even get your foot in the door you know stuff like that but this is this is a pretty low startup cost for doing something yourself so that was what was so attractive about it um you know, then picked up a few pools here. Um, I was trying to juggle, you know, both jobs, one in the pool industry, one in the vitamin industry, trying to do them well, because that's how I do things. And that was really tough. So, you know, my found out my friend Ed, he actually purchased the pool store where he was working. And, you know, that definitely intrigued me for sure. The swim pool warehouse? Yep. Swim nice. pool warehouse. Um, so we talked and definitely thought that maybe I could work there and learn the skill sets and he was on board because he needed someone to do motors at the time so we worked something out we had dinner with him and his wife and my wife and kind of worked out a plan and kind of you know was able to quit the vitamin place and then go work for him for about eight months build them motors so we started out in the motor shop man that must have been a crazy transition I'm thinking you know being in <laughs> You know, like an office space where you got, you know, air conditioning, you're wearing nice clothes every day, you're just kind of doing the thing. And now you're like in, I don't even know, they got AC in the warehouse? <laughs> no, it's a See, swamp cooler. Yeah, so now you're wearing, you know, grungy old shirt, shorts, and you're working on motors, you're hot. Like, did you have any idea what you're getting yourself into? <laughs> Not really, man. <laughs> I I mean, I just knew I had the drive. Did he I mean, leave that out? No, I'm about to talk no. about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely talk about that when we get into his his episode. Like, hey man, you didn't tell me you didn't tell me this part. You know, you, you didn't know me, let me know that you didn't have air conditioning when it's 115 outside. You got a little fan. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. He's gonna be like, sorry, I didn't know you were a pansy. You need air conditioning, got you a little fan. Probably. <laughs> but you know, I I love working for that place. You know, it was uh, definitely a cool learning experience, the best I could probably get you know more than most people get for sure i think that's a huge advantage for you getting to be in the motor shop because you get to work on the motors and you probably got to talk to people there um you know how did you learn about you know stuff that was going on in the pool industry was there somebody there like a mentor or something that you got to talk to yeah i mean it was kind of busy you know running the business so i got to hang out and spend time with his right hand man kenny you know that guy's crazy you've met kenny before Oh, yeah, Kenny, that he's like an encyclopedia. You say one thing about one thing in the pool industry, he will run to a magazine, a book, an article he has saved on his phone, his notes. Like he Definitely kn- not his phone. He still has a flip phone. Oh. Uh, but, well, yeah, he writes down notes on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, this guy, he he's crazy. I know I've gone to him for help before. That's crazy. That's cool. You got to work with him and work in the motor shop. That's a, I think that's a huge advantage for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, because instead of just jumping in and not having any guidance, you know, I think it makes it a lot more difficult. Definitely saw it as a plus. You know, it's somewhere where I could go and learn the thing that I wanted to do on my own. And it also helped Ed at the time because it was summertime and he needed somebody. So it worked out for both of us, I think. But, you know, it was crazy, man. I built over 500 different motors. I, it's funny because we'll go out and see the refurbished motors if we do bids. Like we've seen probably two or three of the motors that I actually built. Oh yeah, we just <laughs> saw one recently. Your were your initials on it? Or yeah, something? you can see like the T stamp in it from Swim Pool House. Yep, that's so cool. Yep. And that's so, super cool. I mean, that's been at least over a year. Those have been running because I haven't worked Ooh, running it for over strong. A year. <laughs> so that was cool. That's sometimes cool to see those rebuilt in the field. Um, but yeah, Kenny, I learned a lot from him. I, you know, I would. Every time I got a chance to pitch him an idea or pitch him a problem, I would. Then he had, he had a 
Ed had a repair guy at the time too that I could run things by. Um, Kenny taught me how to work on all types of different cleaners. You know, I'd sit with Ed and work on cleaners. So there was a lot of education in there for me, for sure. Um, but then it got a little bit crazy, man. I, I started to pick up pools. You know, it started to be where I would start working at 4.30 in the morning because in Arizona it gets like bright like around 4.45, 5 o'clock. So in the summer. In the summer. Yeah. And so, and you definitely want to start then because it's 115. Yeah. It's still hot at 4.30 <laughs> in the morning. It's just the sun's not quite out all the way yet. Yeah. If you guys don't know it, it's still like 95 <laughs> at 4.30 in the morning. Um, but, you know, start there. I had to start at the warehouse at 8 o'clock. So I'd do as many pools as I could do. Usually it's about 6 or 7 before I would have to go work at the shop. Uh, worked there until 5 p.m., you know, and... I did my own pools again after I got off. So, you know, some days were pretty crazy there. You know, after I got off was the only time I had to do repairs too, or on Saturdays. So I would either start my pool. Sometimes if they're, you know, when you're working on pool, stuff happens. So I'd have to like go back to that pool after I got off. Of Especially shop. I'm assuming at that point in time, <laughs> you were a little rusty on some of those repairs. Oh, yeah, man. I didn't know. A lot of YouTube anything. videos, huh? <laughs> definitely a lot of YouTube videos. You had to be on that special data plan. We have definitely all been there. <laughs> Everybody knows you've been Googling something in the field. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, man, that was, no, I didn't know what Jandio rings were or, you know, different stuff that could cause a pump not to prime. You know, I didn't even know you could get pumps clogged until I clogged one. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> until you're vacuuming up big piles of monsoon leaves and... The pump doesn't work anymore. You know, that was a whole crazy experience. You just put your hands up like, dude, you need a new pump. <laughs> Pretty much. done. Pretty much. No, That's dude, you cannot vacuum up like a whole palm tree. <laughs> That's not how this works. Take the vacuum head and stick it directly in the middle of the leaves. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, this thing's broke. All my stuff is broke. Your stuff's broke. <laughs> this is no good. Yeah, dude, that's rough. Um, but no, it was it was a rough time, man. The whole situation is even more crazy now that I think about it, for sure. You know, I got to learn chemicals there part names you know different numbers pricing you know one of the coolest thing was customer service so ed started to have me kind of run a little bit of the front you know towards the end of my time there you know when kenny would need a break or he was on lunch or something like i got to kind of do the front i would check some people out talk chemicals talk problems with them that's one of the cool things about that place too that we don't talk too much about it. You know, everybody brings in all kinds of problems and they solve them. So oh, it's yeah. pretty cool to just to stand there and listen, like a, basically like a Q and a, were you nervous? Like when, I mean, when you first started working over there were people asking you questions and you were like, oh, I don't know how to answer oh, for that. Sure. <laughs> I'd be like, Hey, Kenny. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there was, it, like just I, took, it just took time to get yeah. confident and knowing all the parts and all the chemicals that people would need. And they're looking, like you just said, you know, they're looking for, you know, you to have knowledge in the matter and help guide them into whatever parts they need or whatever chemicals they need. Yeah, I definitely knew motors at that time. So, I mean, if they had talked about motors or pump problems or anything like that, I pretty much knew those. But if you got into technical stuff or super, you know, chemical issues or why my pool is green and all this stuff. Like I didn't know that back then. So yeah, that was definitely hard. I mean, I could test water and tell you that there's no chlorine in it. Oh yeah. I forgot that you, um, he tests water over there yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. That's cool. So except for his sink doesn't like, it, like <laughs> dra <laughs> he drains into like a bucket and you have to like empty the bucket all the time, which is pretty funny, but that is funny. Yeah. You know, it was the best training I could receive, man. It was one of the best blessings in life. Um, you know, that, I got to learn under him and then transition and do my own thing. You know, I got to service a small route for him too, which was cool because I didn't have the responsibility of having that route. You know, if stuff went wrong, I could tell him and he'd fix it. He'd deal with the customers. And so I learned how to do all that. So that was cool. Um, you know, but at that point, it got to be a little bit crazy. So I think we we're at like 25, 30 pools. Um, it was getting a little overwhelming for me to work there and service my own pools. So, you know, at this point, I think is when I definitely started to think about a partner or hiring somebody. I was just going to hire somebody, I think, at one point and stop doing my own route and just keep working at the store because I think that was easier at the time for me yeah. than trying to do both because I needed the income from the store. It wasn't enough income just to do the route. So at that at that point, did you have somebody doing some like miscellaneous repairs? Because now I'm starting to remember some of the Yahoo's. <laughs> you had helping you out you know, before yeah. I came into the picture. 
yeah, I had I had hired one kid and he lasted for like two weeks, and then I had this other guy that was just doing repairs and oh my goodness he was stewie <laughs> stewie dude oh my <laughs> gosh this is an episode all by itself but we're not <laughs> it definitely could be he was he was definitely good at repairs but he had some uh interesting character <laughs> issues yes he did so <laughs> we won't get too much into him but yeah i mean i went through a couple guys there but i really wanted to kind of get to a point where i had a partner or, or somebody that could do the marketing side, the website side, different stuff. So, you know, like this is kind of, I think, where you come into the story a little bit. And, you know, I talked to you about the route, you know, when you came to visit, I think at Christmas or something. Or, yeah, it definitely was Christmas when we started the first, yeah, I when we so. started the business at Christmas. I kind of just said, hey, yeah, this is cool. It's something I'm doing. We talked about it for a brief second. Um, but I remember being like super stoked on it because. I was an entrepreneur at heart. You know, I worked at a military base for a long time, but I was always, you know, and I, you know, thank God every day that I had the opportunity to be at the base and know logistics and stuff like that. I wanted to own my own business so bad that, you know, when you pitched the the idea to me, not even like a partnership, but yeah, you know, I got, you know, this pool business going on. And, you know, as soon as you said that and you were talking to me a little bit about it, I was like super stoked for you. I was like, man. That's cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And I knew nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing about, about pools. It, for sure. <laughs> and I remember that. And I remember you. I showed you the website that I had built, which was, you know, I thought pretty cool at the time. Definitely better than even some of the stuff out there now. Yeah, but no, it was pretty solid. <laughs> definitely not what you've come up with. But, you know, for, for not ever doing it, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, it, was, yeah. it was really good. It was, <laughs> it was like well laid out. It was just too many uh, pictures that... You know, like the number one Google search picture, like you type in swimming pool. It's like the fanciest high res (laughs) picture that pops up. Yeah, but I think everybody does that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like the little guy. I remember there was like the little guy at the bottom, like, like, need help? Contact us. And it's like a dude in a white, all white uniform. Yeah. (laughs) Like a blue hat on. Like (laughs) like website that has the help icon. Yeah. But I mean, all the information was perfect, though. It was it was solid. But just seeing all that, you know, I was like, oof. My brother's getting into some stuff here. I am interested. Yeah, it was cool. We talked about it briefly then. And then I think you were coming out for 4th of July and it was crazy like monsoon season. So haboob. There was a big haboob. And you guys probably don't know what haboob is, but it's a big sandstorm. It's a real but. nasty uh, <laughs> dirt storm. Yeah. So the local Arizonians will know, but you probably Pulls don't know. Pulls worst nightmare. Yeah. yeah. So... I mean, that had just happened, I think, the night before you got here or two nights before, but I had to go out and service a route on Saturdays because at that point I was working six days a week and I had a route on Saturday and, you know, was hustling it. So I had, you know, 4th of July, I believe it was on a Friday and we had 4th of July yep. and I said, hey, do you want to come with me tomorrow or I'll, we can just hang out after I get done? And you were like, oh, cool. I'll come with you. It's a good thing I did help you. <laughs> to this day, to this day, that is probably one of the most difficult days ever. And not just because didn't, we weren't oh. like super educated, but those pools were so messed up. For the both of us. So I don't think I ever worked that hard in my whole entire life because, no. I mean, we're dealing with, one, I've never like professionally ever cleaned a pool, so I have no yeah. idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and, you know, we're just cleaning all how many pools did we have that day i think it was like like 19 or yeah yeah, close to 20 pools yeah so there's like 20 pools and they're probably man it was like 30 40 miles away from even where you lived at they were super spread out it wasn't like our routes now where they're yeah they were it was in the east valley and we only we're in scottsdale so it was in the east valley yeah all spread out you know it was drive time between you know about 15 20 minutes between every (laughs) pool yeah but so we have you know me like not knowing how to clean pools fully and I'm doing the very best that I can. You're trying, I remember like most pools needed some kind of repair. Yeah. Dude. You were trying to figure out how to get the pump to prime or, you know, you were breaking, you know, backwash pistons or whatever <laughs> the heck was happening. And, you know, by the time you would get done making some kind of repair, at least that had to have been at least like five times where you were like watching a YouTube video oh, dude, on like for sure. some kind of repair, which I got, you know, Got a lot of love for you and props for, <laughs> for doing that. Um, but, yeah, it was just ugh, like, dude, are we almost done? You know what I mean? Like, now nah, we still have, like, 10 more pools to go. I'm like, my goodness. Yeah, dude, it was rough. But, you know, even as crazy as that day was, I remember I was like, you know, and there was no, you know, 
we didn't talk about a partnership or anything at that point, but I just remember even at the end of that day, I was like, dude, there's something here. This is, this is pretty cool. And if, you know, get pools closer, that'd be even cooler, but just saw the opportunity there. And, um, I knew you definitely had something good going on. Yeah. That was a crazy fun day and did never really realize that it was going to lead to what it is now, but that was definitely the first time we worked together. And even then it wasn't even a partnership idea. Um, I remember just, you know, wanted you to hang out with me cause you're my best friend and I hadn't seen you in a long time. So we just hung out, had a crazy fun day. And, you know, it was a couple of months later or a couple of weeks later that we had talked about it. You know, I thought that you were probably the best person I could think of to do it with me because our skill sets are so different and we have the same mindset on a lot of things and the same hustle, the same drive. All right. So maybe at this point in time, we can kind of go into your side of the story and where you came in to the picture as far as brothers goes. You know, I stayed in Arizona, you stayed in Cali and... You know, after that trip, you came out and we serviced us pools together. We kind of kept in communication there about everything. So why don't you get into kind of how that happened and what you were doing at that point? Yeah, definitely. So at this point in time, uh, me and you had a verbal partnership. And, uh, you know, you were in Arizona. I was in California. And we were just going back and forth through, you know, phone calls and text messages and all this stuff. And I was super excited at this point in time to kind of rebrand brothers and just kind of have this whole new different approach. Um, Because just after doing a bunch of research, you know, I saw that there wasn't really a whole lot of stuff out there. There wasn't any cool branding or anything like that. So I remember being on my forklift out there at the military base and, um, you know, finding a graphic designer to make us a new logo and I'll send in different, you know, logos back to you. I remember there was quite a few that you did not <laughs> like too much. Yeah, I remember. That's why I was kind of smiling because I remember the uh, Egyptian brothers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be way too cool. Yeah, it was like two little stick figures holding one guy holding the brush, one guy holding the... Po- uh, hey, for man. you <laughs> listeners, it was a lot cooler than that. It was not stick figures, but it was... It was. Uh, it looked you, like ancient Egyptian artifacts. You said it looked like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> You did. It did. did not look it did, like but it. then they were like station positioned where where they're like kneeling and <laughs> holding the thing above their head, like they're gonna go attack somebody and eat them. Yeah, so maybe not such a good uh, pool surface <laughs> and repair logo, but uh, it got I us. remember though because you actually really liked that, and I was like, "Hey, man, I'm not. No, that is not yeah. gonna be." <laughs> so we had to agree on a logo. So I um, got back in touch with a graphic designer, and um, we created what we have now and we yep. both love it um still to this day it definitely has um you know that that feel to it yeah. you know what i mean so we love it so we did that made business cards we talked about how we wanted the the website to flow and the pictures that would be on there um things were pretty good um you know you were working your butt off here in arizona and i was doing my thing in california um so at this point in time i was going to sell my house and move my family out to arizona Yep, and then life throws us a curveball. <laughs> Pretty big curveball. Yeah. So my plan was to come to Arizona with my family to do the brothers' pool service, but I ended up getting a promotion, and uh, that promotion would have sent me to San Diego. I took the promotion. It was pretty difficult. You know, I talked to Tyler, and I said, you know, I was going to have to pass on, uh, you know, being his partner with brothers. Uh, sold my house, moved my whole family out to San Diego. Yeah, man, that was a pretty big conversation and wasn't very cool. Like part of you can, it, you my, can, you're in my friendship. <laughs> yeah, no, you can you can elaborate on it. It's fine. I, yeah. I'd be disappointed too. Yeah, it was pretty rough. Like you know, I didn't get you, so yeah, I didn't win that prize. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, San Diego won that prize. Yeah, but you know, you yeah. man, living in California for so long and just that thought of you know. Because everything's different. You think you're going to live by the beach and you're going to surf all the time and you got this beautiful weather and your kids are going to get to grow up in San Diego. Like, it all sounds so good. Yeah. And uh, No, I it, get it. It yeah. just was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it but was just know, a little bit rough for yeah. us to talk about that because we got so excited, had built this website, started going, the logo was getting yeah. made. It wasn't even here yet. We didn't even have, like, the logo or any of the yeah. cards or the shirts. Like, we just had it designed, and he was working on it, and we had all these plans, and then, like, yeah, nope. Yeah. Ain't happening. <laughs> but, so. I mean, even, like, our friendship wasn't what it is today. I mean, we're 
best friends, brothers, you know, all the way through high school. But, you know, there's that period of time where me and you didn't talk a whole lot because you were in Arizona. I worked a bunch of crazy hours at the military base. So we kind of, you know, we talked and saw each other, but it was nothing like it was when we were younger and no. now what it is today. For sure. So I ended up, you know, taking the job, moving the whole family to San Diego. And um, I just remember going to my first day of work there's orientation i went through the whole thing and uh sitting up there with the supervisor and he's telling us about you know how things are going to roll out you know for the for the rest of the week and i remember he had this amazing view of the ocean and at some point i kind of just wasn't even listening anymore and i was just looking out there and i was like you know what this isn't what i'm supposed to do (laughs) <laughs> I knew right there and then this is not what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, I'm wasn't not going like to a big corner office in a yeah. tall high rise yeah. building. That was beautiful. The ocean. <laughs> that was beautiful. But I, I knew it right away. And even if you were to be like, no, dude, you can't, you can't come to Arizona. I don't want you as a partner. <laughs> like I was going to fight for it because nothing had been more clear. And I always had to learn things a hard way. So I had to, It cost me a ton of money to move my family down there and furnish an apartment and do the whole thing and uh, do all that. But, you know, I shook his hand and I said, you know, I appreciate the offer, but I won't be here tomorrow. (laughs) And he was tripping out because, I mean, this was, you know, uh, a good paying uh, government job. And yeah, so I bet he was totally tripping out because that is definitely something that does not happen in a government. Oh, yeah. I remember talking to the guy that got the same job as I did and he was like dude you need to like stay here for the rest of the week he's like don't just quit like you need to get <laughs> you a, need to feel, you need to get a feel for this I'm like dude I've I felt enough I'm done I'm out of here I'm gonna go start a pool company in Arizona with my brother I'm like that's what I'm that's what I'm supposed to do yeah. and I was excited and you didn't really have a whole lot of pools uh, <laughs> yet and it wasn't nowhere near what it is today but no. I was I was so excited and I remember you know I called you up and I talked to you about it and we talked for quite a while and you said, yeah, let's, let's do it. And I talked to your parents and I said, Hey, would you mind if me and the family stayed with you guys for a month so that we can kind of adjust and I need to find a full-time job and, you know, we'll find a place, just give us a month. And, you know, they're awesome as usual. And they said, of course, you know, (laughs) so packed up all our stuff and moved out to, uh, moved out to Arizona yeah, I remember um, that second conversation, and, you know, it's pretty clear that, well, anybody that's met you knows that you have an entrepreneurial spirit, and it's pretty cool that you made that move because most people would not. Most people would be too scared. They wouldn't, you know, have that uh, intuition and be able to just jump ship like that, especially since you had just moved your family, furnished the apartment, spent all yeah. that money. And, and my daughter was two at the time. Yep. Um, yeah, and I remember my wife, Karina, she was so awesome. She she wanted to go to Arizona in the first place. Yeah, she was I trying know. to, like, talk me out of taking this awesome promotion. I'm like, no, like, we're going to be by the ocean, going to surf, going to do this, going to do that. It's going to be a good opportunity for the kid. But Yeah, to be fair, too, I mean, you had worked really hard for that. So, eight you know, years. Yeah, you had eight years in the making, yeah. so... You know, I, th- I understood it because, you know, if you work eight years for something and then it gets offered to you, it's just a really bad timing. But, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> that choice, you know, like you said, sometimes we all have to learn the hard way. And But my passion for it was so much different than anything else, because when yeah. you when you give that when you give that job up and you have to pack everything up and move again, yeah. your heart has to be all in it. Oh, yeah. 100%. And you have to know you have to know that it's going to work out. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So so that all happened, and um, we moved out to Arizona. We lived uh, with your parents for that month. Um, I had started a face mask company, um, you know, while I was in California. I kind of did it on the side, but um, I hustled that for a while, and I actually ended up getting my masks into Harley-Davidson there in California and made some calls, and I said, hey, do you know anybody at, you know, I live in Scottsdale. Do you know anybody at the Scottsdale store? that can get me any kind of job. I need just whatever, any full-time job. Right. So I got an interview there. I'm working in the uh, motor clothes department. Oh, yes. Um, motor yeah. clothes. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I um, worked in the motor clothes department, nothing but women. I was the first guy ever to work yep. in the clothing department, and I can totally see why. Uh, <laughs> it's not for a guy. I did okay in there, but um, 
It was definitely, it was definitely yeah, I mean, an experience. Your customer base is a lot of guys, so I bet the girls <laughs> have a little bit of advantage there for sure. And you know, that's a tough gig, man. It was, if I remember correctly, it was a hundred percent commission, mm-hmm. and you know, you had yeah. to hustle that, man. Dude, you. So I'm somewhat of an introvert. And it was really hard for me in the beginning to like talk to every single person that came through the door. Like you had to talk to everybody. If you didn't talk to somebody or, you know, make that sale happen, like you just weren't getting a paycheck. You know what I mean? (laughs) For sure. So I had to learn really quick how that all worked. And that definitely, that was a piece of that puzzle and made me who I was, you know, just kind of like how you had to go through all the stuff and all the training you did with the vitamin company you work with, you know, you learn to write the emails and deal with you know, all these different types of people and right. the same thing there. I had to deal with working with just women, which they're all awesome, but um, that's all it was. It was just the women. There was no yeah. guys except, you know, talk to people in different departments. Yeah. You hung out with the guys in motorcycle sales and some other stuff a little bit, but yeah, yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> you definitely had a different um, <laughs> mindset towards it because the girls and I remember some of their guys weren't as aggressive as you, you know, in those sales because you had a family to feed and, yeah. you know, and we also were trying to do build brothers at the same time. I remember there was quite a few times where I would come just like see you in there. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. do you know this guy? Like, yeah, that's my brother. <laughs> you just and had... I'm definitely not here to buy motorcycle clothes. <laughs> no, he's not. Or to buy a motorcycle. No, I. That was so fun. I remember you coming in and you just, dude, your your hands were like sticky. You probably still had lube on your hands. I mean, you you probably cleaned <laughs> yep. thirty pools that day, and but you were just coming in to kind of talk to me about how the day went every once in a while, and uh, yeah. you were dropping off chemicals for me or whatever because I, you know, cleaned some pools what pools as well. Um, but yeah. I remember, I mean, it's crazy now. I mean, you came in there, just beard was a little shaggy. Oh, yeah. Hair was a little longer. <laughs> you know, you had the black streaks on your shirt, you yep. know, where you wipe your... Where All you the wipe O-ring the... grease. Oh, you had your favorite <laughs> pair of shorts. I remember those shorts you had. And I'm like, dude, can I buy the, you some new shorts? The cargo ones. Oh, like my. The... Those were, weren't those your repair shorts or something? Yeah, like the chlorine <laughs> stains. Oh, my gosh. That's so awesome. Yeah, they were uh, rough. They definitely got thrown away. Um, you know, but you have to wear the cargo shorts when you do repairs. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> I didn't do Let's repairs. Honest, when was the last time you did a repair? <laughs> hey, uh, this morning this I morning, did a filter clean. Well, that, I, mean, I guess that <laughs> sort of counts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just yeah. got soaking wet. I should have wore rain gear. <laughs> that's um, all right. You know, the repair was more on my side, and you know, you service more pools, so that's cool. So they were pretty gross. So even working um, Harley Davidson, I uh, clean pools on. I had two days off, but one of those days off, I would clean some clean some of our pools. Just you know, I had to get familiar with even how to take care of a pool and some of the minor repairs and things like that. And that was a way for me to get my foot in the door with how to do that. Yeah. Um, so I was cleaning some pools. Um, there was one on Wednesdays I would help you out before I went in because I didn't have to be in until nine. And of course. You know, when you start cleaning pools, you're starting at like, what, like 4.30? Yeah. Super early. Five o'clock for sure. Yeah. So I'd link up with you on Wednesday mornings and we would clean pools together for a bit. And that was, that was really cool. I remember I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to just do this full time. <laughs> Cause it was cool, you know, being inside an air conditioning building and all that good stuff. But it's just, you own a business with your best friend, brother, man. You just want to be out there in the, you just want to be out there in the trenches, yeah. you know, with your, with your partner. So yeah, it was definitely like a little, tease every wednesday i was like oh man like i can't wait to get to this point because even for me having you there was like pff, way better than being by myself all the oh, time yeah and even not just helping but just somebody to talk to and yeah. you know what i mean yeah it's a little rough sometimes when you're out there all day by yourself i mean you got your headphones and your music and stuff but you know even some of our guys are like man i gotta talk to somebody they'll call us or call each other and stuff just to talk to another human oh, yeah. being because you know sometimes it's a little bit uh isolated out there definitely i mean that's one of the biggest reasons why we're doing the podcast is some form of entertainment and you'll kind of get some knowledge out of it um there's all kinds of things you can get from listening to our podcast so yeah it's gonna be cool i don't know would you do like audiobooks or just music um i, I mean i listen to some audiobooks but mostly talk radio i listen oh, to your like fantasy a lot of sports. football <laughs> that consumes quite a bit yeah it consumes <laughs> a lot from uh september till about now till super bowl's over but you know uh i listened to a lot of that but it was mostly music and i don't know it's a little bit hard i'm sure most people out there can you know relate to that as far as you can't keep two headphones in because you never know if a customer oh, right behind it. you yeah you got 
you know, the customer walking up on you or some dogs walking up on you, some sketchy, you know, equipment areas where you sketchy might... snake, maybe. Yep. That's exactly. It. <laughs> you got these ones uh, in yeah, the desert. I don't do where snakes. You're... You got to keep your eye and ears on some of that stuff for sure. And I've definitely been scared a few times by customers because I had the talk radio too loud or something. And they're like, Oh, Hey, I'm like, Oh, I've been screaming at you. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Jones. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's had that one of those stories before, for sure. Oh, definitely. So, you know, we did all that, helped out cleaning pools, and I was I was so stressed out, you know, being paid only on commission, and I was burning through my savings at that time, you know, because I'd sold my house, but I was just doing whatever it took to keep above water. And um, finally, um, I actually got... I guess it was kind of a promotion. Um, our GM at the time created a new position, social media manager um, for, you know, the dealership. Yep. So I was, man, I was so excited and grateful that they had created created that position for me. Yeah. So at that point in time, I got to take all the photos, videos, um, manage their Yelp, Google, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. So I, you know, got familiar with, uh, you know, taking a lot more pictures than I was before, doing more video, responding to customers. Um, so that was that was huge for us because yeah. I was already kind of doing that, but this really opened my eyes to doing it, you know, on a whole nother level. A whole nother level. Because this is kind of a big corporate company. And then I did that for, I think, a couple months. And then they said, hey, we had these other de- dealerships that, um, you know, Mr., Bob Parsons owns, which was five other motorcycle dealerships. Yep. Can you manage pretty much all of these? I uh, was doing all the Facebooking and Yelping and Instagramming. I was doing it for every single one of those dealerships. And that's a lot. I was, man. Yeah, it was multitasking at its finest. And I did it on top of, you know, doing brothers. And I remember it was just it was crazy because <laughs> we had our website done and you know, we would get like a phone call, man, I would jet out because at that time we didn't get too many phone calls right, and no. too many uh, inquiries from our website or Yelp messages and things like that. So when something no. happened, man, it was like running out the back door to like talk to somebody. <laughs> I remember one time in particular, which was crazy, um, took the call. He's like, hey, you know, if you can come out here and clean my pool right now, I'll give you this, you know, service account. And I was like, you got it, sir. And I remember, <laughs> I think I called you and you were, you at, it was a Saturday because I worked the weekends and you, know, you were it was like, like oh. 4th of July, man. It was oh, 4th of July weekend. <laughs> yeah. It was on 4th of July. We were at, you know, my parents' backyard hanging out, grilling and my phone <laughs> rings. <laughs> hey, I'm going to go uh, take care of this pool on my break. I'm like, what? It's 4th of July. Yep. <laughs> and you don't know enough. <laughs> Yeah, you had only serviced a few pools at that point. So I remember that, man. That was crazy. You called me from there. I think it took you like an hour and a half. Oh, dude. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Thank God I had like a longer lunch break over there um, when I was working. But I remember I could, I was cleaning pools, you know, pretty efficiently, but yeah. um, not. This dude had a ton of <laughs> suction issues, and, man, I remember it just needed to be vacuumed. And I was like, cool, I'll vacuum it up real quick. And I'm like, dude, I got no suction. I'm, like, backwashing. It's, like, all I knew. I wasn't – I don't even know if I knew to clear the impeller or lube the O-ring or do any of that stuff at the time. Doubt it. And I remember he had, like, these thorn bushes right by the equipment. So yeah, every man, time you had to go back in there – It was, like, a small palm tree. Yeah, there was a, it yeah. was, like, a fence <laughs> right next to the equipment with thorn bush. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, is there a reason why this thorn bush and this fence are here? <laughs> You trying to keep people out of here? Yeah, he can't even get back to the equipment. <laughs> still to this day, it's rough on. We still have that pool, and it's it's rough back there. And <laughs> yeah. He's got like all these palm trees hanging over his pool that he never, you know, <laughs> never wants to trim. So yeah, all that stuff was in the pool when you were cleaning it. Yeah, and you definitely learned. <laughs> yeah, I remember you had like FaceTiming me and showing me the backwash valve. I'm like, yeah, you got to turn it here and push down here and then you're like oh it's not doing anything and then all of a sudden you saw the water like shoot out <laughs> i don't see any you're water like, coming out yeah then you see the corner of the yards flooding like oh yep I there it is it, you can do that underground <laughs> yeah dude so so that happened and that was you know we're dude we're hustling just like i'm sure a lot of you you do whatever it takes to get those accounts and um take care of the customer and you just go above and beyond and that was, you know, one thing I'm super proud of both of us. We're just, we're genuine and sincere. Yeah. And, you know, if 
customers are rude. They might not be a good fit for our company. We deal with good people and we go above and beyond for those people that treat us the same amount of respect. So for sure. glad that me and you are always both on the same page with that kind of stuff. Yeah, we have to get, you know, and I know based on some of the Instagram conversations I've had and the DM conversations with different pool service guys around the country and you know outside of the country sometimes you know that's it's pretty cool that, it's pretty cool that most people have the same mentality as we do because i've had people tell me you know oh then you don't want them as a customer or you know i don't want them as a customer because they yelled at me or wanted me to come out that day and just certain things that we're just not going to do because we want that same respect you know we we pride ourselves in customer service and the way we treat our customers and we ask for that respect back so you know, we do things that way, but it's pretty cool. I've gotten quite a few DM conversations or on Instagram or through sometimes through our Facebook. I've seen you and it's kind of like, man, there's, it's pretty cool that other people actually take pride in that and have that same mentality because sometimes, you know, if you're hurting for money or something, you just want to take on pools, but yeah. that is not the right idea at all. You know, well, I mean, I should say in the beginning, you pretty much have to, but yeah. when you get to a point where you can manage that and, you know, decipher which ones you want to keep and which ones you don't and which ones you want to move forward as you know we call them brothers customers you know which ones are brothers customers and which ones aren't that part is pretty sweet yeah definitely yeah it definitely takes a second to figure out you know what what your company is all about and yeah. what's going to keep you up at night so you know finally you know beginning of 2016 in january i start full-time at brothers and it was it was awesome i remember we had a little office at that time over at the swim pool warehouse. Um, our, our we did by then, huh? We had it like yeah. in September. Before that, we had gotten one together. Oh, that's we used to work like super late nights yeah. together too. That's a pretty important story too because we weren't around each other. You worked full time, you know, at Harley, and I was in the field. So a lot of Sunday nights, yeah, yeah Sunday, Sunday nights. nights we would get together at night and yep. work on routes and you know just kind of a game plan for the future. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Those were cool times because that was a lot of Brother's Backbone was built in that three, four months in that little office before you got there full time. And, you know, on Sunday nights until 2, 3 a.m., kind of like we're doing now with pool chasers. But yeah, just <laughs> constantly trying to figure out a way to do things better and not so much researching on the Internet what other people are doing, but it's it's figuring out that, you know, What's Tyler's situation with his family and the hours he can work? And what do we want to do with this company? And what do we want to stand for? And the same with me. We yep. have to build this business and just have it do what we want it to do. Yeah. So that was really important, all those late nights, figuring out <laughs> a ton of stuff. Um, so, yeah, we did that. And uh, I was full-time working yeah. for Brothers. Let's go back to that because I think I remember – we were talking and we had almost, we made a plan, you know, like you're going to start January 1st. And then, so oh, we were talking yeah. and you were like, you know, man, Harley, Harley is trying to, you know, take me to these classes and start me training and going to spend all this money to get me to this point. Yeah. And we had to make a big move. And I remember we tried to give them like a month's advance. You were going to yeah. give them. So they were trying to give you this promotion. Maybe you can just talk more yeah. about it. I don't, you know, more than I do about it, but yeah, I was in like a, like a marketing meeting or something like that. And I remember, uh, they were talking about wanting me to do some training on this, you know, crazy thing they had at one of the dealerships. And I was like, I don't think I should be the person to do that. I'm like, no, well, you're kind of going to be that person. It's like, no, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be here in a month. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. so I said that and they're like, what are you talking about? And I was like, well, it's just, I don't know for sure yet. You know, when the time comes where I know for sure, you know, I'll definitely put in my two weeks or a month, you know, I was trying to give them as much a heads up so I could show everybody what I was doing and how I was doing it. Yeah. Um, so that happened. And <laughs> about three I, hours later. Yeah, man, it wasn't even that. And I was no? working on a, I was working on uh, kind of a campaign for this new um, motorcycle. They kind of put it in competition where they build up these That's right. sportsters yep. and they deck them out. And I was doing photography for it. I remember, I think I was like sick or something, but I got a call and they pretty much said, hey, we need you to kind of go in, pack up all your stuff and leave immediately. Yep. You know, we'll pay you for, you know, the remainder of whatever, but <laughs> you got to go. And I was like, oh, man, I hope. Well, it was cool, though, because they paid you all the way through December, which definitely helped. It was, but it was like, 
nerve wracking. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I mean, what that helped us make the decision much more clear. You know, hey, like, oh yeah, we had you know two three weeks to figure things out while you were still getting paid, which definitely helped. Yeah. Um, but that was pretty cool of them. But yeah, I mean, January first. 2016, which is pretty crazy. I mean, because I started full time like almost January 1st, 2015. Yeah. So it was almost a full year that we like ran this hustle. And I think we were at like one, I don't even know if we hit 100 yet at that point. I can't remember. I don't I, we did so. hit 100 in that office, but. Because I know you were cleaning pools and we had another guy that was cleaning pools with us. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not sure. Where I we remember we, no, time. I don't think we did because we had the board. When we moved to the new office, I think we were at like 130 or something. Yeah. So we had to have been in that office because we were there for almost a year. But I don't think at that point we had hit 100. It was like at 80. It stayed at 80 something for a while. And then when you came on full time. And I remember you telling me like, let's just, let's hit this part hard. And, you know, it's going to take three, four months for this Instagram and the Facebook and the Yelp to pay off. But like once it hits, like you're like a light switch, like a light switch. And that's exactly what happened. Exactly. We were building slowly, getting one or two here or there. And then, you know, once, and that's, I think cool. The part about Harley, about you taking pictures and learning all that, those angles and different lighting effects and things like that. Like it just helped build brothers awareness. And it's, it was pretty crazy, man. Once that, switch hit and we started to move up on Yelp and move up higher and higher. It just got busier and busier and took off. Yeah. But I think we, we did everything correctly. We were just patient. We put the photos on Yelp the way that you should. We had a slideshow. So the most relevant photos would be at the beginning. People messaged us. We messaged back when calls came through, we answered every call. We called voicemails back. We did the work. Well, we communicated with the customers well, but we took it one day at a time. We had a plan for the future, but you know, we, we had patience and we knew that if we just kept running our business correctly, the right way, you know, there'd just be that one day where the phone would just keep ringing and the emails would just be coming in from the website or, you know, however they would find us. Yeah. And, um, it was really cool to, um, be patient and work hard and get it to that point. And, um, the businesses started coming in, you know, pretty crazy we built pretty quickly after that yeah almost <laughs> a little too fast <laughs> yes but you know you're right we were very patient with it and you have to be you if you push it and try to make big moves like that sometimes you know it, you would lack on your customer service or lack on other things and we didn't want that so we just took our time and you know got it to a point where it was us and one other guy and then we hired a couple more pool cleaners and then you know we can get into more of that yeah we talk about brothers more but it was pretty quick man as far as boom 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 and yeah we were at 150 before you know the end of that year so yeah it was quick and i remember you know this is kind of important i mean we were cleaning pools together for a while um but it wasn't too long and we actually got to a point where i probably could have stopped cleaning pools too but we yeah. kind of made a decision together that you know, you were going to kind of do more of the administrative stuff and, you know, the bookkeeping and things like that. And I was going to stay in the field and, and clean pools yeah, full time. Yeah, because the phone calls got pretty overwhelming. And, you know, I started to do filter cleans and, yeah, all the administrative stuff. So I was still on the field doing filter cleans and some minor repairs. Um, but, yeah, we transitioned to that where I stopped doing the route and you took kind of took that over and we split it off between another guy and... Yeah, that that was a pretty big decision because it was, you know, you came from a marketing world and we, you and I talked about brothers and worked on brothers together, but you didn't really get it until after. Yeah, as, you got to you got to the, the ditches. Pool, you got you got everything else as far as the marketing side and how we built things, but you didn't get the part about you know cleaning pools until after that time, which that definitely helped you and me move forward quite a bit because. But I will say this because I think. This needs to be said. <laughs> I think the problem with failing marketing departments, the biggest issue is they're not a part of that world. Yeah. If you are doing marketing for motorcycles or you're doing it for skateboards or you're doing it for bikes or whatever it may be, if you're not a part of that life and you don't know anything about it, like it's really difficult for you to just slap up pictures and write up, you know, do a write up about it. Like yep. I had to have gone out there and cleaned those pools and seeing the monsoon come in and how do how am i going to do this 
you know, the way that it needs to be done. I I had to go through all that in order to be even a better marketing person for our company. (laughs) Yeah. You got to be about it. You know what I mean? Fully. Yeah. That was a, that was one of the best moves we could have done, you know, as far as, as far as building the business together, because definitely at that point, you know, because when we first were doing marketing stuff, you would ask me things here and there. I'm like, no, we can't do that. And you'd be like, why can't we do that? I'm like, cause you you can't take a picture. You can't put their house in the picture. I remember that was a discussion that, you know, cause you used to take pictures of the pool with the house in the background. Like, no, let's not do that because we don't want the pictures of their windows in there. You had to kind of understand different, you know, what the pool service techs were doing to, in order to write, you know, a, little blurb on it you know otherwise it's just a picture of a pool guy doing something and yeah you don't really know what it is you have to know that the service account is yours but <laughs> the pool and house is not yours <laughs> yeah you can't be you know showing you know you know people's windows and stuff like that but yeah yeah that was that was probably one of the biggest and best things that we did was kind of keep myself in the field so that i could um know pools a lot better and um that that's helped in so many other ways even with our team that we have now um i know when issues happen i'm like man i remember being out there when it was 110 degrees yeah and you're you're thirsty and you know things come up with your family i think we're very understanding of a lot of that stuff you know there's some things that you can't help but you know get a little frustrated about but yeah i mean if even today we had a guy that had to go he couldn't come in today our service manager had to go cover that route and then one of our other guys he called and he had to go take care of his sick kid and so you know we have some pools hanging out there that we're gonna have to cover either today or tomorrow. You know, it's stuff happens and <laughs> we get it. And yeah. And we understand just... that those things happen to us too. And you know, when something where you have to leave, I got to cover you and vice yeah. versa. So, you yeah. know, we're all human here. We all have, you know, things that come up. It's just when you build a solid team, everybody's got each other's back and it's, that's a, that's a real, that's a real good thing. Yeah. It's definitely a lot of work and definitely a lot of foundation laying, but, you know, once we can, we got a team that we trust in like this and it's, it's awesome because everybody wants to back each other up and help each other when the time is there. I remember one guy we interviewed recently, he had said like, you know, I don't mind helping out, but when I need some help, like it'd be nice if somebody could actually help, which shows you other pool companies mentalities, you know, yeah. cause that's clearly not how our team thinks. Oh and, no, not at all. You know, even we went and did filter cleans today and, you know, we had to do something. We go out in the field and do things when we need to. We did filter clean today. We've going to go probably cover pools tomorrow, go service them. I mean, I don't like the mentality as an owner where you are just in and out and don't stay involved, you know. Oh, yeah, and of course. We clearly stay involved in our team. You know, we've moved into different roles and doing it full time now that we have, you know, over 400 accounts and different things where it's <laughs> it's definitely, you know, a roller coaster. But We've moved out of, you know, servicing pools or repairing pools. But, you know, if that stuff needs to be done, we'll jump in. We go do whatever it takes. Yeah, we go service pools. We go help our repair guy, you know, pick up some parts, you know, go help him move sand to go do, you know, on sand changes or pick up a heater, yeah, whatever pick up heaters, whatever it takes to get the job done. Yeah. I mean, that's the mentality that we try to carry. And it trickles down to our team, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, lead by example. All right. So at this point in time, uh, you know, me and you are now working together full time and things are good, but pretty much just doing weekly pool service at this point. We were doing some filter cleans and, you know, some other little things. But um, I know we really wanted to get into kind of doing more repairs and kind of learn a little bit more about the customer service side of things. Yeah. I mean, going back to the filter clean thing, I think it was pretty crazy because we didn't realize how vital that was so we didn't have our customers on like a regular schedule at that point oh we didn't no (laughs) it was all like basic if if we had issues with the filters or if there was something wrong we would then clean the filter you know it was only a whole nother like (laughs) what different time when we were like oh man we we need to do this on a regular basis otherwise we're gonna run into all these issues with the green pools and yeah we figure it out but after it's green so i think it was that wasn't a whole nother game in itself to figure out okay well we got people on pool service now we can also get a little bit more revenue here but also making sure that all the pools are taken care of properly because nobody nobody wants to teach you that nobody tells you that that you need to get them on like a regular routine like that's something we had to figure out ourselves and yeah we were doing mostly pool service and then some random 
filter cleans. Um, I mean, I knew how, I knew how to do like shaft seal replacements and things with motors and swap out motors because I worked in the motor shop. But right. that was pretty much the limit of where we were at. And yeah, you're right. We were trying to figure out where we could do repairs. Yeah. So, and I mean, I remember even being at that point where it seemed like it was kind of difficult even talking to other pool companies. Um, it seemed like a lot of, you know, people weren't very approachable, you know, just being in the distribution center and stuff like that just seemed yeah. like people were kind of in and out and they didn't want to be bugged or anything like that. So I think we both thought it'd be super important to kind of go to these different trade shows and uh, try to, you know, find some good pool companies where we could kind of see how they do things, you know, not to, you know, copy, but, you know, <laughs> some of these people have been around for, you know, 20 plus years. I'm sure they know a thing or two about, you know, how to run, you know, a pool business. Yeah. I mean, that's, that was a definitely an angle we took because, and that's part of the reason we're doing the podcast because it was so difficult to approach other companies and they always seem like they, you know, didn't want to help you or they were all tired, which in the, in the summer in Arizona is kind of understandable. Yeah, definitely get that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you, if you don't want to help when it's 115 outside, I mean, yeah, I get it, but you know, it's, it's kind of uh a little bit scary when you walk into those distribution centers when you first start you don't really know what's going on you don't know how to take a number you know everyone's different you, the numbers or you somewhere. don't know part numbers yeah or <laughs> you, don't. you don't really know what you're asking for you, you just, just got pictures like hey can you give me one of these yep and they're like oh my god yep get just your showing. crap together man <laughs> <laughs> yeah to their credit i mean most of them are pretty friendly and they'll help but yeah there's definitely some Oh, they were, they were apples. awesome. There's I'd probably be, <laughs> I'd probably be totally much worse if I were on the other side. Yeah. So you know, I think we've all been there where we don't, you know, you first learn and you don't know part numbers, you don't know how to ask, or nobody wants to help you. I mean, you just gotta ask the, you know, people behind the counter how to help, and that's a little rough because they sometimes don't too, and it's, you know, nobody really wants to help. So it's a whole another ball game to figure that out. Yeah. So I know kind of we're just networking talking to different companies and things like that and i don't feel like we were getting what we needed until um we went to what was it the desert pool and spa show yeah here in phoenix the desert show yeah i think i went by myself that time because you had another something else going on that weekend so it was okay. kind of just me walking through um i checked it out for a little bit at that time it was only me you and one other person though so I forget why, but you couldn't go to that one. And I was walking through the lobby. It's probably at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, probably not. Probably, more. <laughs> probably not. Probably more with your family. Probably in and out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with my family. <laughs> probably more with your family. Um, but I know we had um, found this company called X-Pools, and we saw that they did you know, some higher-end automation, some crazier pools that we didn't want to kind of take on at that time because we had this house, and it had – 12 pumps and five filters and crazy waterfalls and crazy slides and back to then, this day that was still one of the craziest pools that i've ever seen yeah just so many fountains water features the automation was insane yeah um, it's definitely above our head so we had told her you know like we do all the time we're honest with the customers if even to this day we just did it yesterday where we you know if we don't think it's something we can take on or we don't think it's something that our guys can take on or you know, service. We want to make sure the customer has the best service possible. And if it's not us, it's not us. And we don't want to go down the road and try to take care of this pool and screw something up. And then it becomes a whole, well, you did this and no, it was this way when we took it over and things like that. And it's just rough. You have 12 pumps and five filters and trying to keep an eye on all that stuff is just really difficult. So to this day, I mean, we do the same thing, but if we can't take care of a pool, we'll refer it, and that's what we were trying to look for. But we we found X pools when we were doing that, and then we saw they kind of deal with the higher end clientele and higher end pools. So we referred a few things to them um, before that show. And then when I was walking through that show, um, our friend Michael, now he's the owner of X pools, came up to me and he's like, "Hey, are you with brothers?" And I'm like, "Yeah," <laughs> which is pretty weird because that's the first time anybody really yeah sought us out or talked to us because. We were still pretty small then, and it was like, whoa, well, um, yeah. I think I am. Did, yeah. I, do, did I do something wrong? <laughs> 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 so he talked to us. He's like, hey, you know, thanks for the referrals, and, you know, it's pretty cool. You guys don't mind sharing and stuff. And then I asked him, you know, maybe if we could possibly sit down with them and kind of learn a few things. And he was really the first one that helped out 
and wanted to share his knowledge. And still to this day, we have meetings with him and still learn things. We just saw him at the Desert Show two weeks ago. Yep. And, you know, it's it's a good relationship we've built, you know, amongst a few other ones. But that's the goal of the podcast, you know, as far as one of the major goals anyway is to be able to share knowledge, you know, share what we've learned. Like you said, we're not, we're not experts on everything and we still learn all the time every day, but we can share what we know. Other companies can share what we know. We're trying to seek out their stories and your guys' stories out there that, you know, we can still learn. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And I, you know, I always remember when he was talking about, you know, cause we'd ask him like, Hey, how do you deal with your team? Is there anything special you do with them or whatever? And he'd be like, yeah, you know, I keep the refrigerator stocked up with different drinks and, you know, we, um, I don't know, do they do a retreat? They do. They do some type of retreat, but I don't think it's like more like a picnic or something. It's like a, like a day event or something. Uh, no, I think it's a weekend in the Is mountains it? or something. Oh, wow. They rent a oh. cabin up there, I think. Hey, I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So even talking about that kind of stuff with him kind of inspired us to, um, like, I remember one time we actually took the whole team that we had at that time. Um, we went to a Diamondback, uh, Diamondbacks game. Yep. And uh, that was a ton of fun. And, I mean, we just connected with the guys real well. Um, you know, we didn't talk about pools a whole lot, but, you know, we got to know them a little bit better. And we just enjoyed a good baseball game. And they were extremely thankful and I remember that felt really good to us, um, yeah. just kind of connecting with them. And yeah, so it was really important that, you know, we just took our, our team out and did something together. I feel like uh, that was kind of a big kind of morale booster uh, throughout, you know, brothers. So I was really excited for that. I know you were too. Yeah, definitely boost the morale. I mean, we still kind of look for those things here and there to do with them. A little bit more difficult when you got 10 guys, but we yeah. definitely are going to we have some plans coming up to do some of that too with them. And I think it's cool to just get that camaraderie and, you know, be able to have something in common with one another and just something to reference and get your mind off of pools and off of work for a little bit. I think as it goes a long way. Yeah, definitely. And I know the first retreat we ever did, I don't know if that was like a year or two in, cause it was just me and you. And then once we got someone else, we're like, you know what, we should just get away for the weekend and do kind of a company retreat. And, uh, you know, it was just the three of us, but we went away to the mountains, um, pacing or something like that. And I remember it was a good time. Uh, we just hung out there. We did some hiking and, uh, there was a spa there. That was really cool. Um, but we just yeah. connected. It was awesome. And now, you know, the last one we went on, there was 10 of us and, uh, we went to Lake Havasu. That's where we had the idea to start the podcast. Yep. And, um, we, you know, rented kayaks. We had a little cabana, we stayed in a house that had a pool, um, really so, big spa and, you know, we got to hang out by the fire pits and crazy yeah. cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We had a really good time and everybody really enjoyed it. They were thankful and, you know, it's kind of a, you know, it's always a big thank you. We get through the summer and then that fall we go and do retreat. So that's, you know, you got to take care of your guys. They take care of you in the business and you got to go above and beyond to show them that, you know, you're thankful. Yeah. It's something we believe in. I mean, we don't just do it to show face. I mean, it's something that we truly believe in you know taking care of our guys and you know it, re it reflects in the field they take care of us they respect us we respect them that relationship goes a long way you know when if you're going out there and just barking orders and telling people to do things here and there you never show up you never help them out you never you know exist in their lives other than when you yell at them or call at them nobody wants to work in that environment regardless of its pools or another job i mean we've all probably had managers that treated us like that or you know that we're just another person and that's not cool you have to enjoy where you want to work and i think that's what we try to do it's a good goal yeah and i i think there might be a lot of companies that are like hey, i'm not going to do that because you know people come in and they leave and you know they're only here a year or whatever but you know even if they're only here a year or whatever the case may be they're still here they still put in the hard work and you you should still be thankful for them and the, the time that they put in. So um, regardless of, you know, how long we think someone's going to be around, we still treat them with the same respect that we would anybody else. And uh, hopefully they stay longer. And if they don't, then, you know, it is what it is. Yep. There's not much you can do about that. No, you got to run it our way. And we that's what we do. And, you know, the ones that stay around, stick around, enjoy it. I think even ones that have left, you know, they really enjoyed their time here. I think that goes a long way. Yeah, definitely. So I know, you know, we're at this point where, you know, the phone calls are coming in. I'm getting a lot of 
emails through our website and the Yelp and all these different things, but we're turning down a bunch of repairs at this point in time. Um, and I remember me and you, we were just like, man, this is just, this isn't good. We're just given no. all these, you know, we had built up these relationships and we were kind of giving a lot of other companies around us, our referrals and things like that. And, you yeah. know, we we're just like, man, we need to kind of get our hands into this and just not be so focused on, you know, just the pool service. I mean, the pool service is awesome, but we needed to kind of go in, you know, a different direction. Yeah. And, because it's rough when you don't have that for people because when we started to build our reputation and we started to get to our rankings on, you know, social platforms and things where the calls were more flooding in, it's rough to not be able to, you know, provide the service that they're asking of you. And that's a tough thing to navigate regardless. Cause I mean, some people are just not happy that you can't help them. They want you and they only want you. And sometimes that's rough. So it got to a point where it definitely wore down on you and me. And we were like, man, we got to figure out something because, you know, we were turning away lights, we were turning away heaters, we were turning away, you know, all stuff that's very important to the pools. Also, you know, the, some of the bigger repairs for us, we were turning away, which is rough. So, um, you know, I think at that point we had decided, you know, we really need to find somebody or someone that can teach us. And I think you had gone into SEP, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, we were, I feel like we were kind of talking to quite a few people about how maybe we can get some better training. And I, it was just so difficult. I mean, you could go sit in a classroom. They'd be like, well, you know, sign up for this and you can sit in the classroom and they'll show you this and they'll have their, you know, slideshow presentation, which is, is cool. You know, you can kind of get a good idea of what to expect out there, but right. um, it's not the same as doing it out in the field. So I remember, yeah, in the distribution center one day, we were at SEP and, um, you know, I was asking the guy behind the counter if, you know, he knew of anybody that could help us out. And it was, it was real funny. I remember he like whispered it to me. He's like, I know somebody he might, he, <laughs> he, he might be able to help. Yeah. I'm like, well, dude, here, here's our contact info. Have him reach out to us. And, uh, I think it was like that evening or something. Uh, our very good friend, Mark Hernandez, um, called us up and, uh, yeah, we, yeah. uh, yeah, set was... up a day to come and do uh, a first repair with us. We set up a repair and he met us at the job site. And it was just awesome. Yeah, it was you, me, and our other one guy. And we pulled the light for the first time, showed us how to hook that up and how to tie it up, to pull it through. And we did it, and it was pretty cool. And then, you know, he's helped us ever since then. And we would, he made it super available for us to call him when we need help with repairs. He did our first automation panel with us. He helped us hang that, walk us oh, through yeah. programming it, you know, and... You know, him and Jason from Pantera came out, too. They kind of hung out with us all day, which is pretty cool because, you know, they definitely had other things to do. I know, you know, they yeah. get their phones blowing up all the time. But but I think it was really important. I mean, we talked to them a lot, and we we told them. And, I mean, they could have very well not believed us, but I feel like we were pretty aggressive. Like, no, we, we want to learn this stuff. We want to be known for repairs and automation and different things like that, not just pool service. Right. Like, we really want to learn this stuff. And I, I feel like they they understood where we are going with all of this and you know they already saw that we had a pretty good reputation so you know we were kind of you know somewhat of an investment for them yeah we were definitely eager i mean we showed that hungry eager ready to grow ready to be you know sort of a new movement on the industry and try to get into automation and things that you know the future where it's going in the industry you know we got much love and respect for everybody who built this industry but we want to kind of be some pioneers towards the new stuff. And that was what I think Mark got Mark so excited about working with us because, you know, we, he saw that we wanted to grow and learn everything and, and learn you know, new stuff. Yeah. yeah. Learn new stuff. A lot of people don't want to learn new stuff, but you know, you definitely should be open to it regardless of, you know, how long you've been in the industry, you know, it's definitely moving that way, whether you want to believe it or not, you know, yeah. it's the automations moving that way, you know, the, new heaters, the new eco-friendly stuff, all that stuff's going to stay here for a while. It's not going away. So, yeah, you know, we definitely, like I said, we respect everybody who's built it, but you got to get on the bad wagon a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of sink or swim out here. It's moving pretty fast right now. And I know we're, you know, we're much bigger into automation now. We want to be a pioneer kind of like X-Pools just because there's so many companies in our area here in Scottsdale anyway yeah. that don't really do a whole lot of stuff with automation. Right. And it's still relatively new. There's not, you know, a lot of people out there still don't really know what it is. Um, but it's something that, 
we think is convenient for customers. And we think it's really cool that you can turn things on and off with your cell phone, tablet, whatever. Um, and just kind of that whole process is really cool to us. So we've invested kind of a lot of time into learning how to do it better and, yeah. you know, kind of better marketing strategies to, uh, to getting those jobs. For sure. So we're able to kind of get more, you know, repairs, automation jobs and things like that. Cause now we're moving into, you know, we really got some momentum going on Google and Yelp. Uh, you know, still to this day, you know, we're number one in our area for Yelp and uh, Google organic search and things like that. Um, so calls are coming in. Everything is really good. Um, uh, we have a amazing reputation here in the city of Scottsdale for pool service and repairs. Um, so that kind of gets us into the social media side of it where, you know, we started just getting a ton of DMs. I remember a long time ago, we we're like, not sure where us taking pictures and posting on Instagram and things like that. I'm not sure where that's ever really going to get us. Cause we didn't get a ton of customers for it right. from it. Um, but we kind of, you know, created this whole new movement in the pool industry where, you know, it's like, dude, pools are cool. Let's take photos of it. Let's make the best of it. And let's be proud of the industry we're in. So I think we did really well at that. And we got tons of direct messages on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and things like that where, they, uh, they're asking us for advice on business or how to take a picture, how they should do video or just kind of giving us props. Like, Hey man, I love the hustle, love everything you guys are doing. Keep up the good work. Yep. And that has really, um, definitely inspired us to do what we're doing here today with pool chasers. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Cause I remember when you first, we started talking about doing an Instagram account and you know, that's a little bit harder too. And we're just trying to focus on Scottsdale. So I remember trying to build it using different hashtags, trying to figure out, you know, which Scottsdale ones we can use to reach just Scottsdale people. Cause you know, you had talked about, you know, oh man, this is too broad. We're getting people from all over Phoenix and all over the, the Valley. It was like a total different <laughs> game to figure out which, which hashtags work for our certain customers. I remember you telling me like, just believe in it, man. Well, it'll, it'll be something someday. And, you know, it got us to pool chasers now, which is pretty crazy. We have a few customers that came through Instagram, but really ultimate it's led to us wanting to do this podcast to help people because people figured out they like what we do. And, you know, we know quite a bit about it, you know, especially you and just helping people out is what we want to do. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I, I think it's really cool because I feel like in the beginning, you know, we started the account years and years ago and there wasn't like a whole lot of pool companies on there. And tell me it's not just super cool now we can see people doing repairs and service and different things like that from you know from all over the world you know what i mean and that's just cool that we could pop in there at any given time and somebody's doing some type of repair or we can see just a different style pool you know it's you know the winter now so kind of seeing that there's you know there's no Frozen. snow anywhere near here so yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool you know just seeing how people are adjusting to different things in different cities and countries and things like that yeah you're seeing like pools frozen over and icicles hanging off of <laughs> pumps and filters and different crazy things that we don't deal with here so that's super cool i remember man when you first started that instagram account it was like you know a few pool companies here and there but really not very many people doing it but now it's super cool to have that connection we have that online community with people and we can see talk back and forth a lot of you guys out there know us from instagram you know what i mean so we talk on dms and you know, comment on each other's photos, pictures, videos, just be able to share what we do and see what you guys do, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate, you know, all the followers and yeah, it's really awesome to see how things turn out. Yeah. We never really knew where it was going to go and you know, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, so at this point, you know, we're kind of, we pretty much outgrew, you know, our little office that we had, you know, super yeah. awesome of our friend, you know, Ed at Swim Pool Warehouse to, uh, you know, kind of give us that little space we could rent. It was an office and we had the other kind of half of the office where we could put some equipment and things like that. But I remember it was just getting way too crazy. I mean, we had stuff for repairs the next day in the area and it was just getting way out of hand. So yeah, I think at that point we had had me, you, um, Jay, and then we had two other guys. So trying to get in there and, you know, you and I had our desks and Jay had a little desk and he would help the guys in the morning and things like that. And, the guys would roll in and <laughs> it would be like a little, we had this little side corner with a curtain pulled over it. You know, <laughs> yeah. Ed had talked to us about, you know, making sure we keep it clean. We tried our best to do that, but it was 
definitely getting super difficult to do that at one point because we had to keep chlorine. We had to keep acid. We had to keep different things. And, you know, we didn't want to keep it in the yeah. building. So it was a little bit Stink up the place. <laughs> I mean, our, both of our trucks were loaded with random chemicals all the time. That oh, yeah. People were pulling out of. And, you know, we just had all of our, like, basic repair stuff. You know, the vacuum for sand changes and the dolly and some other things just hanging on the wall and just in that little corner. <laughs> and we had to run a SCP all the time for little things. But, yeah, it was getting rough to... It was a small little room, not bigger than, not much bigger than what we're sitting in now, and we had everybody crammed in there. So that was definitely cool to have that little office from Ed, but we definitely outgrew that space. Yeah. So at that point, you know, we had to go look for, you know, something a little bit bigger, and then we found a really nice, uh, right down the street, we found a warehouse slash office. And I remember we were pretty nervous at the time because it was definitely, we we're going to p- be paying quite a bit more for that, but you have to take risks. And I know that we we're like, man, like, we're going to be doing more jobs. We're going to be doing this. We're going to hire more people. Like, we need to do this because we need, we need more space. We need to take that risk and just, and just make moves. And that's exactly what we did. Yep. That's, that was a big move, man. It was quite a bit more money than we were paying for the little office. So, you know, we, we took it upon ourselves, and we knew we probably were going to have to do more pools or more things ourselves to build that income. But we knew the reward would be there if we just pushed and pushed, and so we did. And it turned out, you know, we got a good deal on it where we didn't have to pay for the first couple of months and stuff, so that helped a lot. And then yeah, we were negotiating pretty good. Yeah, I feel like we we're like, man, we gotta, you know, meet us halfway with certain things, and they were they were pretty cool with everything. Yeah, luckily that had sat empty for quite a while, so we got we had a little bit of play there. But you know, I think it hit just perfect timing. You know, we we got in there and right before our busy season. So it kicked in pretty quick and helped us. Yeah. And it was crazy. I remember being in the warehouse in the office. We had like, we had nothing. It was like bare bones, this huge warehouse. And we were just storing a little bit of chemicals. (laughs) We had a little bit of inventory. Like we had like really nothing. And we were trying to figure out better processes. I mean, we just, we never stop with that. If there's a problem or something's not working out, we're constantly trying to figure out how to, you know, how to do things better. Um, but you know, as time went on and we were patient and we saved up money and did different things, we could, you know, we put in, you know, you know, warehouse racks and shelving and things like that. And we got to buy some more, you know, back stock on things. Yeah. That was pretty funny because it was just you in my office. And then we had, I'm going to give a little props to Jeremiah. He, he did a lot in the beginning, kind of helping us grow, you know, those pools. And so we had his little desk and little corner and that was like it, man. It was yeah. like this humongous warehouse <laughs> <laughs> with a little bathroom and closet. And we had like a few things in the closet, his little desk. And then we had like two racks in there and they were small racks. They were like the plastic ones you buy from Home Depot. They weren't real racks. Yeah. I mean, it was so huge in there. I remember we wanted a basketball hoop for the oh, longest yeah. time. And it's like, <laughs> no way in hell we're putting a basketball hoop in there now. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? It's pretty tight i mean it's not super tight quarters because we got to put the repair van in there now but yeah, i remember back then we're like room. oh yeah we do some floor hockey we're gonna <laughs> shoot some hoops and we no. talk about skating in there oh yeah we no. did skate in there for a little while but <laughs> i tried to yeah, but there did. was only like 10 feet of <laughs> flooring for me to skate on yep that so. was pretty funny we did try to put a basketball hoop on the i mean i mean we looked at them on craigslist and everything we were totally yeah. gonna buy one and something happened where we didn't but there's i guess it was just meant to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's pretty tight in there now i mean we not super tight like you said but it's just there's organized. at least i don't know one probably eight racks in there and you know a lot of different types of inventory we have you know a repair bench we have a cleaner bench with you know o-rings and things on it yeah. we have a repair section and, and stuff like that a couple of refrigerators and now it looks like a actual stock, warehouse stock yeah warehouse. <laughs> But now, that was a pretty funny beginnings, man. It was like, whoa, like I don't even know how we're ever gonna fill this. And now, yeah. you know, we're not we're not getting close to pushing out of there, but we could get something bigger, you know, in the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that was our vision, and you know, we were patient with it. We're like, man, you know, we need to have this stuff in stock here, so when the guys come here in the morning, they could just grab it and go. It's like, you know, at that time we were on a budget. We couldn't really afford to do those things, but we're like, you know what? You know, we save and we do these different things. Like we're gonna be able to keep a lot more things on hand here in the warehouse and you know we were patient with it and now we're able to keep a lot of different things you know obviously you can't keep every single thing because it's like dude every pool is like different (laughs) somehow Um, well i know you me and gawk and kyle for a while went out and they we would clear the warehouse of just all the junk like a few times here oh yeah we still do it 
sometimes, but I remember the cleaner rack that we had saved all these old cleaners and, you know, we let Kyle kick it over. I think it's on the Instagram, but he pushed, oh, pushed yeah. the whole cleaners over and everything broke. And <laughs> thank God I got so sick of seeing that Yeah, <laughs> graveyard of cleaners. Yep. I was finally got rid of those. And, you know, we've, we've cleaned that thing hundreds of times, just getting rid of junk here and there the closet piles up full of junk or clean it out again and it's like oh yeah i hate seeing stuff that you don't <laughs> need like really what is this yeah when are we ever going to use this random band clamp or random you know hose or never never so our customers <laughs> aren't paying for used stuff until you throw it away yeah <laughs> yeah we've been there throw it away be like, like hey do you guys have a yada 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 like we uh, did last week we did you can go check the dumpster <laughs> hopefully trash day wasn't anytime soon right <laughs> Yeah, we don't use much used stuff at all. So, I mean, t- even to keep it now is kind of pointless. So, I know we try to bring some stuff to the swimming pool warehouse because they have the motor shop and some used stuff there. But, yeah, it's it's a cool thing, man, to be able to grow from that little office to what we have now. And, you know, it's, it takes a great team, and we have a great team. Yeah, we do. And so we're at another point at Brothers where we need a full-time repair person. And... um that was going to be huge for us because I know we were all kind of running around doing, you know, different repairs and things like that. We were doing the best that we could, but we needed somebody that was really good because we still needed to run the business and things like that. And I remember we, you know, we're like, okay, let's put a job on Indeed, Craigslist, things like that for a repair guy and put it out there. You know, there's different resumes coming through where people had a couple years experience, whatever. And uh, I remember I was running on the treadmill at the gym, you know, one evening And I'm, you know, somebody applied for a job. See that right on my phone. I'm running and I open up the resume and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh my goodness. (laughs) I I jumped right off that treadmill so fast. I ran out the door and I called our guy right away and I said, hey, you know, you know, very impressive resume, yada, yada, yada. Um, Would you like to come in for an interview? And he came in and blew us away. Yeah, he is. We were, I mean, it was kind of funny because we had not like looked, looked for one. We were just like, you know, let's. Let's make this plan and we'll put the Indeed thing out there. And I know that one was out there for a couple of weeks. You know, when we try to hire techs, it's a little bit more quicker, but we wanted a specific person. And, you know, like you said, there's a few that came in like, yeah, he's got two years experience or he's got, he's done some repairs here and there. But then we saw Danians and it was like, man, oh, yeah. like, yep, this is him. And, you know, you never know really if what the resume says is true until you meet him. So when we had that interview, you know, it's it's kind of funny because you and I have developed this little process of looking at each other in interviews and just knowing that yeah yeah, yeah we can let, let's offer this guy a job or yeah no like this guy has no chance but <laughs> double nod no <laughs> yeah we got this you know thing going so we kind of looked at each other and you know talked a little bit we went you know usually we talk we tell them we're gonna call him back you know but we went into the other room real quick just talked real quick and then came back out and offered them a job and you know it's been a great relationship and great for brothers. And I think it was a great change for him because he wanted to be part of a growing company and be yeah. able to do some of his own. That was the coolest thing. Yeah. He wanted to be able to, you know, show what he's learned and, you know, be able to help grow processes and things. And it's been a good fit. We also went and just bought a repair van. <laughs> yeah. So we needed a vehicle for this guy. So we just pretty much were like, we got to get, some kind of wheels for the repair division. And, you know, we went out and bought a brand new repair van and, you know, I know we're, we're super proud when that moment came. Cause you know, we pretty much at that point in time had really no, not a whole lot of debt yeah. uh, for our company. So it was really nice that we went and did that and he was very appreciative of it. Yeah. And we, I mean, that's the first vehicle we bought in other than our two vehicles. We kind of had those and some of the guys use their own trucks here or there. And we didn't have like a, actual you know new vehicle that was a pretty cool thing to be able to go in there and purchase it um but it was cool to provide him with that too because we've always wanted something stocked like that but we didn't know how to make that move you know when we got dana and we figured out that that was a very you know good move for us and him and the process and it could totally change what we were doing we could stop turning away heaters we could stop turning away lights you know it was a really cool thing yeah, because we could kind of do what we needed to do in the office, and then we actually have somebody that's, you know, very skilled. He's got, like, 20-plus years of experience. So, you know, we trust his judgment, and, um, yeah, he's a huge asset to our company. For sure. You know, I want to just go back into our team a little bit because I know, like, 
want to give a big shout out to them because you know we we do what we do and we make the moves we want to make and you know give processes and then the best we can do but without them you know it can't happen you know oh, yeah. they they believe in our vision you know all of them have come from different places where they told us some of the stuff they didn't like at their you know last places and nothing against those companies but we just you know we take into account what each of them say and we hear them and listen to them and i think that's a big difference between us and many other owners um you know and i think it's a good thing for you guys to try out there with your employees you know make sure you take care of them because if you don't they ain't relationships last yeah i mean communication i think you know when you go back into yelp and to google being those number one on there and things that's that's all we do is communicate you know there's you guys have all heard you know oh my guy didn't show up or he comes random days you know we're all i'm I'm just getting invoiced left and right and i don't know anything that's going on with my pool equipment you know all of that we we've taken into account from our customers and from different people and we put it in play we communicate that's why we get that ranking and we get that you know love on social media because we just try to do our best every time and communicate and yeah there's been times where we slip a little bit here and there because we're human but like we always try to make it right with communication and our guys are you know our extension of us on that which is really cool because we definitely take time to hire the right people you know we've been through you know quite a few guys that weren't right and they did good work here but you know they just weren't a good fit and that's a big point and they are an extension of what we are in the field which is pretty cool yeah most definitely we love you brothers team you guys are all <laughs> super awesome yeah um, it's yeah. not easy building all those processes and you know getting everybody on the same page but you know we worked hard at it they yeah work, they work hard you know we have meetings with our team every monday morning that we can go over certain things certain training things got to bring in the bagels got to yeah. bring donuts dude <laughs> if you don't yeah. bring that stuff they definitely get love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> no but we we love it they they deserve every bit of it yep for yeah. sure and you know it's it's cool to see it play out and you know like you said we respect them and they give us respect back and we ask for that you know, there's been times where some people have showed us things, you know, or complained about something. Like, hey, man, like, you know, we show you respect and we listen to you and you, you know, you want to be heard, but you got to listen to us, too. Like, you got, it's got to be, you know, that mutual forth communication. Same with the customers. We go back and forth. Like, we email them to try to get something. We've had a guy just recently that wouldn't respond to anything. And finally, you know, I had to, we had to email him, you know, hey, like, we're going to stop service, and he finally communicated back, and... He apologized. He, yeah, he admitted it. He yeah. dropped the ball on the communication. You know, we have to have that back and forth, even with the customers, and I know every, you know, somebody, all you guys out there probably have customers like that that don't want to communicate, don't want to fix something, or just don't get back to you. You know, that's frustrating, and we do our best to communicate, and we want customers that are going to c- communicate back. You know, we take the time, our guys take the time to go in the field and take the time to look at the equipment, find things, like, you got to show us the respect too by, you know, even if you say no, even if the customer says no, at least it's a response. We can, you know, figure out a plan. But if you just ignore it, it's going to get worse. Yeah. And then it plays out where we get blamed and all this stuff. But luckily we keep that paper trail and we can say, hey, you know, we reached out to you on these days and you didn't respond. And, you know, that happens. But the communication is huge in this industry. And if you don't communicate well, it definitely is reflected. Yeah, most definitely. You live and learn. You live and learn. I know all the, you know, initial bids and things like you know, for pool service, you know, we're very transparent and getting that information across to our customers where it's like, Hey, this is what you can expect. This is kind of what we expect from you. We're only here, you know, one day a week for, you know, 30 minutes, whatever, however long we're here. So, you know, if you ever have any issues, you know, just let us know and we'll take care of it. Even if you have an issue with the technician, you know what I mean? If he comes in and he, you know, sits in your chair by the pool and doesn't do anything, he just sits on his phone. And, you know, even in that case, we're like, Hey, you know, let us know what's going on. We'll take care of it because we communicate with our guys. And what I love about our team too, is we communicate so well that nobody's scared to say anything. Right. And I know we've had people in the past where I think it was really difficult because they didn't want maybe us to be disappointed in them. But now it's like, hey, we admit it. When we talk in our meetings, like, dude, we make mistakes just like everybody else. You know, we just have to make sure that we communicate that. That way we can take care of stuff. And we le- we learn from our mistakes. So we know next time, like, hey, you know, I remember I remember when that happened last time. Try and not have that happen again because it kind of sucked. Yeah, I mean, even if you break something in the backyard or you, you know, say something you're not supposed to say in the backyard or something like just admitting that, 
you did something like that's the best part because for us that's the easiest way to defend you you know or you know if the customer's blaming you for something and we know what happened you know we can defend you or vice versa if the customers complain about something and if they keep complaining about the same thing it's probably you you yeah. probably keep doing the same the wrong thing so you know it's cool for us to be able to communicate that but yeah you're right it's transparency is is key for all that stuff's gonna go wrong all you can do is your best right. that's it every single day yep so I just want to kind of conclude this episode. I want to say that, you know, we're not really any different than any of you that are listening. Um, we have our good days, not so good days. Um, we're not, you know, professional podcasters, nor do we know everything about the pool and spa industry. Yeah, I mean, we're just really excited to share our stories and many other stories. It's an amazing industry. You know, we want to be able to entertain, motivate, and teach through this podcast, through our stories and your stories and your contributions and our contributions to this industry. You know, it's pretty cool. And, you know, like you said, we, we run our business. We run a pool business just like you guys. Yep. And Majority of the time. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be transparent with you on this podcast too. You know, it's it's difficult for us sometimes to get in here to try to record you know, we're going to do our best to put out these episodes. We have a difficult time getting in here sometimes because we're running a full-time pool industry business just like you guys. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, please email poolchasers.greg at gmail.com. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Our tag is Pool Chasers. Your feedback is very important to us. Please leave us a rating in iTunes. It would be much appreciated to see how you like the podcast. Thank you all very much. See, see you out there, Pool Chasers. chasers.